Hey everyone, welcome to Gilbro's Gaming Channel. I'm going to do something different today. We're going to be taking a look at Conflict of Nations. It's a mobile game and it's on desktop as well, but we're playing World War 3. Um, and they have multiple different games in the Conflict of Nations um, sort of genre. Um, so you can have a look here. Look, they have all sorts going on. But I'm playing on the World War 3 one and I've been really enjoying it. So... I thought I'd give it a shout out. This is in no way sponsored by Conflict of Nations or anything like that. It's just I wanted to point it out to people who may enjoy this kind of game. Now, if you like Risk the board game, then you're going to love this, man. I love Risk. Um, firstly, Game of Thrones Risk is probably one of the best board game risks. But we're going to take a look at this. So you can buy gold. That will help speed you up. Uh, and all that jazz same with any usual mobile game it's a bit easier on my mobile but on on desktop you can flick around using your WASD um, now let me zoom right out you'll see the green area is everything I control I started off with Mongolia and now you can pick your civilization that you play or sort of where you play in the world your country if it's available so as you saw, there's 64 players in the game. Well, there's not any more. Because some people leave. Um, like China's probably left. Because I've dominated them. Absolutely dominated. So, more or less, you've got the whole world in this version. I have played the Europe game, as you saw on there. So I tried playing Europe, and I was Croatia, and I got absolutely wrecked. But that was the first time I played. And I didn't know what I was doing at all. So, as you can see, it's the whole world. Everything's on here. Every little division that you see here is a as another player, potentially. There's different sectors of the map, different countries. And the, the light green ones that you see here are actually in my coalition. So, I joined a coalition. And this is the Asian coalition. Japan is the leader. He had started the coalition. So if I can just find it on here. We're going to diplomacy. You can see that we're up here. Um, this is our flag that they've chosen. Um, messages and trades. You'll see that I'm trying to get Vietnam and Myanmar to join us. Because we're about to lose Saudi Arabia because they're losing. I think they may have given up. So anyway, if we zoom right in, I'll show you the basics of what you need to do. You need to manage each province that you have. Um, so say, for instance, I click on this one, Bogan, in Mongolia. We can build things here. So we can go to build. I don't have the resources to build anything right now because I've spent it elsewhere at the moment because I'm on this game all the time. But anyway, you can make combat outposts. This will help strengthen your resistance if someone was to attack it. Airfields make it so your planes can refuel here and re like sort of be in the area for longer. Field hospital does what it says on the tin. That's going to heal your units a bit quicker in the area. Local industry. Now this is going to be more important when you have special resources on a location, and that will help produce more. And then you've got military logistics, which is like improving the roads and things like that. Which is why you can see these white lines. Once you've done it, it will show you the white line. So that's what I'm trying to do currently, which is increase my logistics everywhere. As you can see, I have a sweet tank battalion moving down. Um, there's a few bits of China left, which are these red parts here, which I'm about to take. That unit, all you've got to do is you click on a unit, and then you push attack, and then it'll tell you how long in real time there are faster servers which do it four times speed, etc. This is like one times speed, so normal. And then they'll reach there and they'll fight any resistance in that area. Um, and what I'm doing here is I'm getting all my tanks together and my squad of infantry, as you can see here. They're all going to meet up here. And then we're going to attack this town, Lhasa. Lhasa, or I don't know how you, how you say it. But we're going to take that city from China. I think it's the last one they have. As you can see, I've taken Shanghai, Hong Kong. Uh, we have some Vietnam soldiers that are just chilling here. They were attacking China as well, but they haven't done anything with these. There's quite a sizable force here. Uh, free infantry and free recon battalion there. So 
I am sort of preparing a defense around it should they choose to attack me. Um, this bit of China I can't get to because I have to go through Vietnam, I think. Um, I mean, I might be able to pass down through here, but when I last looked, it was like you have to declare war. But you have to manage each, each region. I'll show you. I've got... Where's my special resources? Here we go. So, anyway, look at the top here. You've got supplies. That's just for... You need these massively big spender on these. Um, you've got components which can be produced around the map. Fuel. Electronics. Rare materials. You've got manpower which kind of comes from having more land. Uh, and then you have your money. So I've got a fair bit of money. I've been selling bits and pieces. I sell microchips or electronics because I make so many. Um, currently waiting for more components so I can make more tanks. But as you can see, we have them here. So in these places, you're going to want to build your local industry. And that's going to improve how much you get out of that, that particular area. Um, which is definitely something worth doing. As you can see, I've got fighter squadrons as well. I have one there, and I'm moving one down to Hong Kong from here, as you can see. And we can actually send them to intercept any enemies and they'll do like bombing runs until the enemy's destroyed or they are, or you call them off. And you can also set them to patrol certain areas as well. So as you can see, like, I can cancel their orders. Patrol, which that little green circle you see, kind of their patrol area. So you can set them on a city if you wanted to and they'll patrol around that city. But I'm currently just moving them south so that they can be quicker to the area I think I might need them if Vietnam and me go to war. So um, yeah, there's a few Chinese troops. Like I said, I'm pretty sure they've given up. So I've not seen any movement between anything Chinese for a while. There was there was a lot of to and fro in at the start, but I think they gave up. So I'm just cleaning them up now. Um, What else can we do with this game? Security Council out access is something I, I did have, I think. Um, as I joined through the infographics, they are sponsored by the game and you can get 20,000 gold and Security Council access. Gives you, you know, building queues, which I don't really use. And as you can see, there's a list of things. Don't really use any of it, so not really going to affect your game by paying for a premium. Um, coalitions, we can have a look. Here is all the coalitions. Ooh. Now the Tigers of Asia are Vietnam and Myanmar. I'd like to absorb them into us, which we are the Asian coalition. We have 300 provinces. As you can see, we are the most powerful province-wise out of the lot. I did worry about NATO for a little while because you had Russia is right above me. But they are currently being smushed by... Um, this area here. Who have they got? Kazakhstan. They are moving up into Russia quite heavily. So I've got to prepare this border more or less just in case. But we'll deal with our enemy first. But yeah, it is just a matter of waiting real time to get the resources enough to buy units. So if we go to a city, for instance, we can see you can mobilize or construct things. If we go to mobilize, I'll show you the sort of cost of units. Now, you can switch between all sorts of things. As you can see, you need 1,800 components to build tanks. But we're, we're building tanks in, I can't say the name, Choi Bao San. Um, but I do need lots more supplies and components in order to start this up. I could afford more fighters, which is something I can't do in this city because we don't have an airport here. But in another city, I could build more fighters, which does interest me massively. Uh, and then they've got the buildings you can do as well. You can make submarines, missiles, a navy. Seriously, you can you can kind of just do anything. You've got to manage your country and its defenses, logistics, commercial side, everything um, in order to sort of do good. So 
In order to unlock more units, as you can see, these ones greyed out, we don't have yet, but I have got the basic mechanized infantry, which I researched. You do need to go into the research bit, which you can do two at a time. Again, these are gonna cost resources. So if I wanted basic Marines, you can see I need 1,325 supplies as well as the other bits and pieces to start the research. And it gives you a description of what they are and what they do. So is heavy infantry ready to deploy via land or sea in response to a local crisis or flashpoint? Trained in amphibious landings or urban warfare, these soldiers bring the fight to the enemy. So it's definitely something I want to get um, going forward. But I did research the main battle tank. I thought that would probably be quite excellent. Uh, I'd like to get some more support. As you can see, there are all different options of supports that you can do. Um, helicopters. You can really bring some pain late game, I think. Or early game if you're willing to pay for it, I guess. But nothing guarantees you. I should probably get a navy sorted so I can go around and help people quicker as well. Submarines would be kind of cool. And then I guess these are just like guided missile programs. So say we wanted that. Missiles are, oh man, we can just fire missiles from, from here, can we? Ooh. Okay. Isn't it crazy we can get a nuclear weapons program? As you can see, I'm not researching anything currently because I can't afford to. But I have also done the seasoned veteran, which is an officer. As you can see, they add a different abilities to your soldiers, giving them an extra percentage in attack and things like that. So definitely going to be cool. Little army boost, look. Attack plus 15%, defense plus 15 So these little things are going to make big differences to your soldiers um, so that they can attack or defend against the better troops if necessary. But yeah. I mean, it's a real slow game. It is playing through real time, like I said. Very much like Risk. You are playing against real people. I think some of them can be bots if they don't find enough for your server. And that's okay. But it's about working together, making a team, fighting your enemies to win the day. I think the idea is to control as much as you can before the season ends or something I don't know how much time there is to do it I assume it's quite a while it might be monthly um, but I've only just started playing it for the last couple of weeks and I am loving it and I thought I'd share it with you guys so you can have a look at it yourself so it's conflict of nations world war three you know let's go yeah baby hopefully we can do this all right, guys, well, that's just a quick one. Thanks for watching. If you have enjoyed it, please do drop a like on it and subscribe to the channel for more daily content, all sorts of stuff. And then uh, if you enjoyed me showing a mobile app off, do let us know and uh, we might do more of it. All right, thanks, guys, and we'll see you on the next one.